Good evening, one and all. Happy holidays. This is the Metal Hammer of Doom. I am your host, the Mandator Reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Rattledge. Joining me shortly, wherever he may be, is the Metal Coop, Mr. Robert Cooper. Uh, for those that have been following the show for the past few months, you know that sometimes Robert works a little late, and he gets to the show a little bit later which is why we went from starting at 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock to 10.30. So we'll be waiting for him to join us uh, shortly. This is the last episode of the year, 2015. We will be starting again next year with reviews for Megadeth and Anthrax. They have albums that will be coming out uh, in January, so we'll review both of those. In the meantime, um, November was turkey season, so we reviewed two turkeys, here on the Metal Hammer of Doom, one was the best of Limp Biscuit, and then the other one was uh, Celtic Frost, as I recall. Um, that was done on Thanksgiving by Jesse Starcher, uh, the substitute host with the most. I actually have to give him and Jason Teasley a special shout out tonight. They are the uh, host for from the cheap seats, and we had we we ran into a bit of an accident tonight, um, where. Uh, the wrong tracks were had been uploaded, and I had to take them down, and I was in the middle of dealing with my kids, and I've got sick kids and all this other stuff, so uh, I didn't have time to really sit down and fix the, the tracks for tonight's podcast. So J- Jason and then Jesse came through for me, and we have all of the tracks tonight from Heavy Saurus, Ray Halista Jula, which means in Finnish, uh, Ray Halista Christmas. I don't know what a Ray Halista is, though. <laughs> Trying to find information on this band Heavy Saurus is uh, interesting to say the least. But anyway, special shout out to Jesse and Jason for helping me out uh, in a in a in a pickle. That being said, we are going to be talking uh, about Heavy Saurus tonight, which is just a great band. These guys are from Finland. Um, they uh, they formed in 2009. And they're basically a children's heavy metal band. I mean, if you look at their if you, their Wikipedia page, which is hilarious, by the way, uh, the genres, heavy metal, children's music, power metal. And they were on Sony, as a matter of fact. The members consist of Hera, Heavy Sporus, Millie Pilly, Compy Mompy, Riffy Raffy, and Muffy Puppy. I like Muffy Puppy. That's my favorite. Um, <laughs> they have their own origin story. It's really funny, actually. According to the legend, uh, five dinosaur eggs made from metal, made of metal, made of metal, survived the mass extinction 65 million years ago in the Mountain of Wizards. I love Finland. I, uh, depending on how next year's election goes, I may move there with my family, whether they like it or not. So my wife has a friend who lives in Finland, so I'm sure she'd be fine with it. In any case, in the year 2009, witches gathered at the same place. A giant lightning bolt hit the <laughs> a giant lightning bolt hit the ground and changed it to ash, revealing the eggs at the same time. From the power of the witches' chants, you see, the eggs exploded wide open, and five heavy sauruses hatched, and so. They have gone on to release several albums, one of which was this past year, which had I known about this band, that we would have covered it. Um, so uh, Soitika Juranoid, which uh, came in number 12 on the charts. Uh, they had an album in 2013, 2012. They had two in 2011, one of which we're, we'll be talking about tonight. 2010, and their first album was in 2009. So this one too, uh, came out in 2011, Ray Halista Jula. This is a Christmas album, ladies and gentlemen. And we here at the Rattledge and Broadcasting Network, we, uh, we are not part of the war on Christmas. <clears throat> so stupid. Yeah, we, uh, we, we like to have fun here. And we are, you know, and when possible, we like to celebrate the holidays as they come up. And so being as this was our last album of the year, we decided to do a Christmas album, and then I found that 
a bunch of Finns dressed as dinosaurs did a Christmas album, and I said, well, this is how we're ending the year. I don't even care. This is what we're doing. So um, I hope it's as pop- popular as our baby metal review, which apparently is the, mo- is the most popular one we've ever done. I don't know why. I don't know what's so special about baby metal versus anything else we've done on the Rattle and Broadcasting Network, but that one took off like gangbusters. So I appreciate all the people who went back and listened to our baby metal review, which featured Jason Teasley and my wife, because uh, Cooper was not available that night, and my wife had lived in Japan, so I thought she'd be good to have on. So tonight, it's just me and Cooper, whenever he uh, opts to call in, wherever he may be, and working on the truck there at the, at the Lowe's. We're going to go ahead and uh, read some news here before we get into the celebratory holiday music. So we're over on metalinjection.com. To, uh, I follow them on Facebook. They tend to, I swear, I tend to get a lot of my uh, news from as far as what albums are coming out, what tours are coming around, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so one of the things that I saw, I had seen actually, <laughs> for those of you wanting to celebrate the holidays and need yourself a fancy sweater, Pantera's got Pantera's got a holiday sweater for you. It actually says "fucking holidays" on it. It's you know your typical ugly Christmas sweater. It looks fantastic, and then in in, in colorful, friendly letters, it says "fucking holidays." That's <laughs> great. Um, but yeah, we, besides that, there were some tours that were uh, coming around that I was very interested in. Unfortunately, none of them coming to my area, uh, which is the, which would be Tampa, Florida. But uh, some, some that were announced recently, uh, the aforementioned Megadeth will be playing with Suicidal Tendencies, Children of Bodom, and Havoc. So uh, check out that if it's coming near you. They'll be coming to Texas, Hawaii, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. They'll be coming. They'll be doing two nights in New York, New York City. They'll be in Boston, Philly. They'll be all over. Um, not a lot. Of can, only two Canadian, four, five Canadian dates. None, uh, as, as none in the South as such that I can see. Uh, this is the Dystopia World Tour. And this is the first half of their uh, tour to support the new album that's coming up. So if you live, so if you go to metalinjection.com, check out the, the full uh, listing of tour dates. I'm not going to read them all right here. Uh, unfortunately, if you live in Florida or North Carolina, like myself and uh, Robert Cooper do, well, you will not be seeing the show because that ain't coming anywhere near you. Uh, another tour that was interesting to me was this one, uh, Cannibal Corpse. They're out there running around on tour again. Cannibal Corpse, Obituary, Cretopsy, Abysmal, Dawn. Um, so their 2016 tour has been listed, and it's quite the doozy. It's actually going to end in Florida. Um, they've got a couple of nights here, March 18th in Tallahassee, March 19th in Tampa. That's right outside my door. And uh, March 20th in Fort Lauderdale. And that tour starts actually – in February 12th, now just about playing every single day. So if you are into the death, death metal, go ahead and check that out. That's Campbell Corpse Obituary Cretopsy and Abysmal Dawn. All right, um, so we're waiting for Cooper here to join us. We're going to give it a few more minutes, and, uh, and then we'll get started with the music, and he'll just have to join in when he joins in. Uh, a couple more tours that I wanted to share with you, Decapitated, Black Breath, and Theories to tour North America in January. Um, Trivium's doing a mini tour on the eastern half of the United States, and this is the one that I wanted to read to everybody. Okay. So there's there are two here that I actually really wanted to go to. <laughs> That's my mother-in-law's dog who we're watching for the weekend. Hi, Sammy. Sammy's on the podcast. We're waiting for Cooper, but Sammy just made himself known. Um, Yeah, this is a big one, and I'm really disappointed this one has not uh, released dates anywhere near uh, where I live. This is Slayer, 
Testament and Carcass. And I, I love all three of those bands. I'm a huge, I've seen Slayer dozens of times. Um, I don't, may have only seen Testament once. I'm not really sure. But uh, they're definitely want a band that I want to see, especially, you know, we reviewed, I think, their last album here on the Metal Hammer of Doom, and I loved it. So I would love to go see them live. And Carcass is a band. I haven't really paid much attention to them since I was in high school, uh, which was many, many moons ago. But um, I liked them back then, and they they probably only gotten better. So uh, I would love to see this show, Slayer, Testament, and Carcass. According to Metal Injection, and this was uh, written on December 3rd, fuck's sake, uh, December 3rd, uh, this is the first round of tour, uh, first round of tour. Um, that they've released, and you know, there's probably going to be more. So uh, this tour starts in Chicago. Uh, they will be at, they will be in North Carolina. Um, as a matter of fact, they'll be doing a show at, uh, in Raleigh at the Ritz, and in Charlotte at the Fillmore. Um, only one date in New York, and it's in Port Chester, of all places. Port Chester. Um, no dates here in Florida. And they're ending, and the, the last show that they have here listed is March 26th at the Joint in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, I'm pretty annoyed about it too, Sammy. Um, so hopefully they'll announce more dates, uh, and they'll hit the you know they'll hit Florida and if you you know the New York's a big market. I'd be really shocked if they didn't. Uh, do a show in New York City at the Roseland. I don't know the Roseland's gone now. Um, at uh, I don't know. I don't even know what's left in New York. Irving Plaza maybe. Uh, this last one, and then we're going to get into we're going to get into the show here. Um, Napalm Death, Death, Napalm Death, Napalm Death, some Melvins and Melt Banana, which is apparently Japanese noise metal, from what I understand. <laughs> I told my wife I was going to drag her into this one. And then uh, she she apparently did something really nice for me in terms of buying me tickets to something. And I, I don't know what she did yet, but uh, I told her, okay, I would spare her milk banana. But <laughs> that's one where they'll be in Orlando, as a matter of fact. They'll be uh, they're doing a whole bunch of shows here in Florida. Uh, Pensacola on April 4th, Tallahassee April 5th, Fort Lauderdale April 7th, Orlando April 8th, and Tampa April 9th at the Orpheum. Um, lots of shows here. Two nights in L.A. at the Troubadour. Two nights in Frisco uh, at Slim's. Um, doing a couple shows in New York, New York. One in Brooklyn and Williamsburg. And um, one at Webster Hall in Manhattan. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of dates here. If you're into Napalm Death, and Jesus, why wouldn't you be? And the Melvins. I'm not a huge fan of the Melvins, but... Um, and milk banana, of all things, uh, you should be able to find a show near you. They've got quite quite the, quite a lot of them on this tour. So that's that. Uh, there's still more being announced, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the show, uh, start playing some music here. Um, oh, I, I, let me uh, let me quick throw this out there. Uh, Tool and Primus are also touring. I wasn't. I don't really care for Tool, so I didn't check on the dates to see if they were any in Florida. But uh, go, if you're into it, if you like Tool, and I know people do, I mean, Tool Tool's pretty popular. Um, and I've seen Primus enough already to not want to have to sit through Tool. Go ahead and check that tour out. It looks fun. Looks fine. Um, but it's uh, it's not not for me. Ooh, Lamb of God confirmed with Death Heaven Power Trip as it. As openers for tour with Anthrax, Lamb of God, Anthrax, Death Heaven, and Power Trip. Very cool. I'll have to see if they've. Uh, I'll have to see if they've got anything going on here in Florida. Let's see. I know I thought I was going to start the show, but now I'm curious. Uh, Tennessee, New York, Connecticut, Texas, Texas, Texas. There's always, there's always like a dozen shows in Texas. It's huge. Uh, no. <laughs> Nothing in Florida. Well, that's depressing. Moving right along. All right, folks. Uh, so, Ray Halista, <laughs> Ray Halista Jula, okay? 
Ray Halista Christmas is what that means. That's the name of the album. And the first song on here, uh, all the whole thing's in Finnish. But I've gone ahead and went to Google Translate <laughs> to translate some of these so that I would know uh, what the hell they were, ta- they, were, they were telling us, you know, what these songs were about, see? Uh, and so the first one here is Tanta Hevia, Tanta Hevia, which means gnome heavy metal. And we will listen to some of that right now. And uh, we'll talk about some of these lyrics because they are, they are fantastic. So here you go. Here we go. Tanta Hevia, gnome heavy metal. Lastatta taivei lahjoilla lahjoilla oivilla ja Petteri Karvainen printeri valmiina lähtöön. Joka para jengi sinne lähdet pukki taivaalle, saapuneet jakoin pohojan maalle. Se kiertää maat ja mantereet kaiken maailman tumperit. Nyt alkaa bileet! And I played it for my son, uh, Jesse Starcher, uh, the co-host with the most, substitute host with the most, uh, has played it for his son. And, uh, you know, there's nothing like dinosaurs jumping up and down <laughs> the white background. It's the, the video really makes the song. But I think the first thing that jumped out about me about that is, you know, like, okay, so this is heavy metal, right? You know, after all, they hatched from metal eggs in the wizard's mountain or some shit. <laughs> but that was, that was very poppy. You know, I'm like, I thought I wasn't expecting grindcore or anything. You know, obviously this is supposed to be children's metal, but it, 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 it was more danceable than I, than I thought it might be. Um, there, was, there was something about it that was very poppy. That was very, uh, very mainstream. So <laughs> I have the Google translation. Okay, so gnome heavy metal. Now, Google Translate works very well in small doses. However, it doesn't always do so great uh, for long passages. There are certain things that just don't translate very well. Uh, and so you get, a, you get a smattering, you get a flavor for what it's supposed to be, but it's just gonna, some of this is going to sound pretty goofy. Um, and I'm assuming that in the original finish it sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a holiday song, and I want you to get that holiday feeling, the holiday spirit, if you will. So Santa's sleigh is now loaded to dream. Kajulila gifts of Rila. Okay, I, I don't know Finnish. I don't know how any of that's pronounced. And Peter, Peter, Harry Sprinter, ready to go the whole reindeer gang. Their lens buck the sky. Inbox shortly. Hoho Janman. It circulates countries and continents. Everything in the world of Tampere. Now start the party. Brownie, brownie, brownie. Gnome heavy metal. <laughs> when the buck is gone, so the elves bail up. Brownie, brownie, brownie. Gnome heavy metal. When the car stereo does not scream, worries effort. When the car stereo does not scream, worries effort. 
brownie, 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 gnome heavy metal. Christmas Eve is a heavy time. You ain't kidding, heavy source. Until the day is Pukasa. And see what I mean by some of this stuff doesn't translate. And spins elf circuit impotent. Ooh. On Coco Carvin Tune Tree, very confused. <laughs> Christmas tree turned upside down. Mm-hmm. There is a celebration. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to stop just momentarily. There is a celebration in its secret. The light thrown into the particular project. Near hut dash away to watch. What in the world are here rain hot on? Maybe it means reindeer. We monitor the director and it has that bounce and then it goes into the chorus there. Uh, so that's hilarious. <laughs> that's, that's good stuff. All right. Um, so I don't have to talk to myself for the next hour and we're still waiting for the Coopster to arrive. I go ahead and bring out uh, my substitute co-host, Amanda bailed me out of a jam. He is the host, the gracious host of Source Material on Monday nights here on the Rattle Legend Broadcasting Network. And he's the co-host uh, when football's in season for From the Chief Seats with Jason Teasley. Mr. Jesse Starcher, how do you do, sir? Heavy holidays to you, sir. Yes, heavy holidays indeed. <laughs> uh, that first track, by the way, uh, yeah, Colton loves it. And to this, to, today actually, just to get in the spirit, because I knew you guys was going to be covering the album tonight, I made sure to play it one more time, and it, it's got to be played at least three or four times if Colton's in the room. He loves that video, and of course, like I said, he thinks the uh, thinks the dinosaurs are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I'll, I'll let that did, slide. Now, did you play for him the actual Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um uh, out from the shadows trailer that uh, yes, dude. Today. Just played. I just played it. Uh, probably about as soon as Caleb got off the bus, I was just itching for him to sit down. I was like, man, you got to watch this because, of course, I saw it earlier today. And listen, I, this is going to be. This is going to make me. Uh, I, I'm. Uh, it's going to be tough to admit this, but I'm excited for the sequel and of all the crap. That is, that has been given to Michael Bay and his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one. All of a sudden, I see Casey Jones and I'm popping like a, a you know I'm I'm all excited like Stone Cold just showed up or some crap. Um, it was I, I'm ex, I'm excited for it and I I know that my kids are going to enjoy it. The kids enjoyed the first one, and Colton of course yes he'll he will know what a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle is, uh, dude. Uh, just a sidebar here. Okay, how many times have you watched the mo- the the Michael Bay Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Once. Uh, saw it twice. Fell asleep on it both times. Okay. <laughs> well, at the end, there is this particular song done by a rap group of or rap some rap guys or whatever. Uh, my son likes something. My littlest, my two year old. If he likes something, he will drive that shit into the ground. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that particular video, which I can tell you it's shell-shocked by Wiz Khalifa, some other two or three other guys, it is, it, it is on request at least every day by the kid. Um, and for a while, that particular song by Hevasaurus, Tutanhevia, I'm, oh boy, it's going to be a bad night of pronunciation, so I'm going to let you handle all that. But uh, that particular song was is is still a favorite of of Colton's. He loves to watch it. He especially loves the the little girl who's playing in the closet with the dinosaur and whatever. And then the mom comes up and scolds her. And then all of a sudden the door shuts and the kids start smiling again. Colton just looks at me and smiles like he knows this kid's getting away with something and he thinks it's <laughs> hilarious. Um but anyway, that right there is about the extent of uh, what I know about this album. So the rest of this album, I try to make it a point to get on Spotify each Thursday when you guys are getting ready to cover something. Today was not one of those days. So the rest of this album, I, it's going to be a treat to listen to because I have no idea what's coming up. And I can't wait to hear what your interpretation of stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, I listened to the album a couple of times. Uh, the, the whole album is actually uploaded to YouTube. Mm-hmm. 
and I'm, you know, I listen to it there, and I listen to it on Spotify. And you, if if, if you didn't know that the cover of the album was the dinosaurs all wearing like Santa hats and riding in a sleigh, and you didn't know Finnish, which I don't, uh, <laughs> you wouldn't know this Christmas album based on how the music sounds. You know, it's not like you hear sleigh bells, you know, no. or you know, it, it, it's it's not like you can tell like, oh, that's that's sort of a, a heavy metal version of Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. No, these are all original songs, as near as I can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, trying to find information on this band or a review of the album or anything beyond the fact that they exist and you can buy their album somewhere was next to impossible. I don't know if there's more written about them in Finland, but they're you know there ain't shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> As far I as tuned, what I find written in English. I tuned in late. Did you explain how you found out about these guys? You know, um, I spent the first 15 minutes or so actually just re- going over some tours that are popping out across the world, some that I'm interested in. And I talked a little bit about where, you know, where the band came from. As far as how I found out about them, I, I think they came up in my feed one day on Facebook. Uh, I follow... Let, let me go off on a slight tangent here about how I operate my Facebook page. I don't really like people. Um, <laughs> I have, I have social media. <laughs> I have some friends and I have family that I, I, I'm friends with on Facebook. But my Facebook and my Twitter are mostly like I like uh, news sites. And that's the kind of stuff I want to come up in my feed, and that's what I'll share with the actual individuals that I know, you know, that I'm friends with or that I'm following or that are following me on Twitter. Because, you know, you follow me on Facebook, and, you know, I I post, you know, like three to ten articles from various sources a day, whether it's, you know, stuff from psychology or um, news. I try not to do too much political stuff because um, part of the reason why I don't like people is is, – the divisions that have come across uh, politically, uh, and I'm not going to get into it here, but there's a reason why I've been posting a lot of being emotional does not substitute for a logical argument type of articles that have been coming up lately. <laughs> um, but, you know, things you know, things like the robots taking over, I'll share that. Anything that has to do with um, uh, psychological studies, you know, bipolar disorder, borderline personality, I'll share. And another thing that, getting to my point, Another thing that comes up in my feed is uh, I follow Metal Injection and some other me- um, heavy metal news sites. And mm-hmm. I think on one of them, you know, uh, people put up clickbait. That's what they do. That's how they, you know, they, they, they'll, they'll, oh, yeah. these websites will just put up anything so that people, you know, throw a headline on there so that people go, ooh, what's this? Mm-hmm. And one of those things where this is the greatest thing I found today kind of a thing. And, and, and I think you know what I'm talking about, where, like, Start, they'll put up something silly, give it a silly headline so you'll click on it. Mm-hmm. And one of those things was in Finland, there's a band that plays children's heavy metal dressed as dinosaurs. So that's <laughs> when I found the band. Okay, <laughs> It came up in my Facebook feed as something like, oh, this is, you know, and now for something completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started researching the band and I saw they had a Christmas album, and, and, and it all sort of came together for me. I'm like, perfect. This is how I want to end my 2015, with dinosaurs jumping around <laughs> playing Christmas music. Yeah, and this band's well, been around for a while, too. 2009. Wow. It's, it's um, After you had shared this with me, and I, I think I saw it on your Facebook, and of course I think you tagged me in it, um, I've, I saw – the another article that uh, we're speaking about this band um, it is a, a website by the name of dig dot com, which used to be way back in the day uh, was kind of like a forerunner for Reddit, where you could vote on stories and stuff like that. And I remember when Dig used to be, you know, that was the thing. So anyway, that's obviously gone by the wayside. But Dig picked it up, which I thought was pretty. That was pretty monumental. Obviously, this is – Dig always shows, like, some of the most popular stories, kind of like Reddit Lite. Um, but uh, but anyway, so after, shortly after you showed me this, so something got – this all of a sudden became viral at some point, um, this particular band. And it's interesting to 
see that they actually have a metal Christmas album. These people <laughs> dress up. I don't know if you've seen any of the other videos that these guys did, but there are plenty of them on YouTube. I mean, they're dressed up to the gills, doing a, doing uh, freaking interviews and stuff. Um, so very interesting. That's something we, we don't see around here. I mean, can you name any bands that dress up and play metal for kids in the United States? There's no. not very many, if any. Um, no, I mean, there's you plenty of gimmick bands. But I, I would tell you, like, Europe doesn't take their metal nearly as seriously as we do. We are a, we are an angry, brotastic oh, yeah. country. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> you know, I mean, we uh, we 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 definitely choose. We we definitely chew on metal and shit chains in this country, or at least that's what we tell people. Um, I saw. I don't want to get political, but I saw a great um, Bloom County, Bloom County 2015 uh, thing where um, the father uh, is watching Trump say something, and he goes, you know, and the kid says to him, he's like, I don't understand. What are we? Are, you know, are we all supposed to be frightened or something like that? And he was like, No, not me. And in the next panel, you see the dad. Crouched in a corner underneath his windowsill, you know, holding various bats and lightsabers with a helmet on. <laughs> oh. um, my father says, "Land of uh, uh, land of the free, home of the chicken." Um, so, anyway, <laughs> yeah. They, so, um, getting getting back to this, yeah, I, we we take our metal very seriously, and Europe is like likes to has more fun with it. So you have like pirate metal and all the sort of you know different stuff. Um, I, this is, which is why I like it more. Mm-hmm. But um, I can't think of anything you now that's really related to children. Um, that's that's heavy metal, not in this country. I mean, a couple we have maybe we have a couple of bands that sort of dress up. I think um, I think we've got some pirate metal bands. You know, we've got we've got other bands that have sort of a gimmick here in this country, but nothing like this. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and go to track two here. I don't know what this means or even how to pronounce it. But um, it's it's spelled S I J A I S P U K K, Sijais Puk. I'm just I'm just inventing accents now. So this is track two, and we'll talk about what it what it all means in just a moment. <laughs> jump out at you, I think, musically. Here are the lyrics. Okay, translated right. from Finnish. I received a Santa call. It asks me to fill in for job may take a dawn. Mua expect a large sleigh. <laughs> Mull, uh. is a sack of... <laughs> Mull is a sack of gifts and carve a new to neck reindeer Oh, I'm not even going to try what the next two <laughs> words are. <laughs> Hoo-hoo. Now Christmas bells are ringing. Ding, 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 dong. Listen. Hoo-hoo. 
the title of the song, Great Whiz in the Sky. <laughs> Great Whiz in the Sky? Great Whiz, W-H-I-Z, in the sky again. <laughs> Arriving at the... <laughs> Arriving at the... This is that's not Christmas related. <laughs> <laughs> Arriving at the yard of a small cottage and the reindeer gray guffaw. I don't think there's any other metal song that has the word guffaw in it. No. Nope, I nope. reached out nope. and I used a no children allowed raises. <laughs> I snuck inside a large fir tree at the foot of I put the gifts in place. Hoo hoo. Now Christmas bells are ringing. Ding 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 dong. Listen. Hoo hoo. <laughs> And it goes on. Oh man! So, so is this Santa Claus singing? <laughs> I, your guess is as good as mine. What, 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 are, what are some of your thoughts here? Uh, well, it sounds like he's he's. It sounds like Santa Claus to me, man. He's going around putting Christmas tri- Christmas presents, and he's talking about his trip around the world. Uh, I'm going to assume that the Great Wiz in the Sky is a sleigh as he's going off and, and not. <laughs> Not in any relation to the yellow snow that was going through my mind. Um, so no, I'm gonna, I, I, I will say it's Santa Claus. See, I have a slightly different interpretation. I think you're on the right track, but I think someone's subbing in for Santa. Oh, okay. I think this is one of those. I think I feel like the song is about someone tapping, like Santa tapping someone on the shoulder. You know, like these dinosaurs. You know, I think like Santa Tim needs Allen. help. And Tim Allen tapping, and Santa Claus. Yeah, I think Santa Claus is tapping Heavy Soros on the shoulder and saying, will you help me? I think that's the point of the song. Oh, so these guys are taking over and helping him out. All right. Yeah. Sweet. That's my interpretation of it. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Well, unfortunately, I think that that's probably going to be what we have to go with, because that's really all we have to go with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, me... I don't know anyone from Finland who is sort of filling the blanks yeah. here. That's the cultural, you know, sort of the blind leading the blind. <laughs> let me read. Let me read you some. I, I just checked to see if Hevisaurus was on tour, which they are not. Uh, but there are so similar. There are similar artists on tour, and I'll read these to you. And I just want you to tell me if you've heard of any of them, and could tell me if they're any way similar. Uh, which there's probably no way. Uh, Ari Kavunin, ever heard of him? Not the way you're not the way you're saying it. Maybe if I saw the name. Okay. Let me go ahead and I'll just go ahead and uh, this is from Bands in Town. I'll send you the link here real quick, and you take a look and tell me if you see anything on there. Uh, maybe I'll send you the link. I don't know if my my internet will work here. There we go. <laughs> um, and that's Control V, not just V. There we go. All right. So we now there there are some that I can read, such as. Uh, we have uh, Cheek, Freedom Call, Power Wolf, uh, Sonata Arctica. Okay. I know Sonata Arctica. Really? I, I, here's the ones I can tell you for sure I know of. I know Sonata Arctica. They, they, I feel like they just put out an album not that long ago. And when we, and I know for sure that when we do their, we do our covers uh, show in March. I got. A great cover of Sonata Arctica doing "I Can't Dance" from Genesis. <laughs> it's fan-fucking-tastic. But yeah, Sonata Arctica is a band that I've been following for years now. Um, Ed Guy from Germany, I know them. They're awesome. They've got a cover of "Rock Me Amadeus," which is amazing. Uh, Power Wolf, I've heard before. Um, moving, I'm not reading all these because I haven't heard of most of them. Uh, Battle Beast, another one. Battle Beast, I've heard of. The rest of these, now. Okay. Glory Hammer? Again, I probably, I, I, maybe, but it's not sticking out to me. Okay. Well, it's better than Glory Hole, I guess, so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we've what's, gone what's, blue what's the on the dirty, Christmas album. <laughs> what's the really dirty sex band that uh, that I love? Um, oh, oh, Jesus. Like, Steel Panther? Steel Panther, yeah. They would just agree with you about the Glory Hole. They sing all songs about it. <laughs> They're all about the glory hole. Oh, indeed they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's, that's not holiday related at all. Um, let's move on here to track three, moving right along. 
this next one is called Piani Le- Piani Liecki, and I actually have a translation for that one. Uh, yeah, I got it. This this one actually translates to something. It means a small flame. And again, I, I apologize to the people of Finland for destroying your language. <laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> language, and I'm sorry I'm strangling it to death. <laughs> so here it is. This is a small flame. <laughs> Mitä hän tuo tyttö suree, mistä hän on huolissaan, taitaa olla aika yksin, nyt mua kyllä tarvitaan. Sinä tulit siihen viereen ja sä tartuit käteeni, tuli lämmin niin kuin oisin kotona. Sinä olet pieni liekki, sydän jo kasaa. Loistaa niin kuin tahtoo ja löytää tulemaan. All right, so you get the idea there. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so, this one's kind of sad. I'll read a few lines from it. I'm not going to go crazy on this one. This one isn't as fun as the last two. Uh, I wonder what I wonder what that girl grieving. I assume that means I wonder what that girl is grieving about. What is she concerned about? It's time alone. Now it me is definitely needed. You came to the next and you jumped in my hand. Became warm as unusual home. There's someone from Finland listening to this show who's like, "Fuck Google Translate." <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> the, the heart that causes to shine as he wills and discover the future. The chain of small flames when one blazes. So together they change the world. Yeah, I had to today. All alone play. I did something fire. The flame faded alone. Those others we built a castle and ice walls. Um, there's something about a Borealis down here. And the the song ends, they repeat the phrase, so they so together they change the world. So, I mean, I'm sure in Finland this makes sense in terms of the kind of song that you would associate with the holidays. I what? couldn't begin to tell you what it is, but yeah, I, I feel I'm, like... I'm lost. <laughs> I, I feel like, I mean, if I could sort of run it through my American translator uh, for culture... I feel like this is the kind of song that you would you would listen to while looking at the Yule log, which, by the way, nothing is funnier to me than than um, the, the the year that uh, my first marriage, the house that my wife and I lived in, actually had a real working fireplace in Florida of all places. Yeah. You don't need a fireplace, yeah. but we had one. And uh, I grew up in New York, and none of the homes that I lived in in New York, and there were two of them, had fireplaces. Uh, we had chimneys, but no fireplaces. Um, so when my father would want to watch the, would, would want to you know light the Yule log, as it were. I don't know if you if they did this in Ohio, but on one of the network channels, the one, not NBC, CBS, or ABC, but one of the other um, one through thirteen channels, uh, they would play the Yule log, and it was Christmas music and just a shot of the a, a standard single shot of a Yule log, and it would just play for hours. So my father would put that on when we would trim the tree or open presents or whatever. Uh, and it was like one of like, I could tell time by this because my father would always put this on during Christmas time. And one year he, he, was at, he was at our house for Christmas and he was like, put the Yule log on. And like, we have a fireplace. <laughs> and I, <laughs> if you really want to see wood burn, we can, you know, we can make it real. We can make it real. Yeah, we can we can get that shit in HD, 3D, if you want. <laughs> and my fault, and and he argued with my wife and I about it. He was like, "No, I want the actual Yule log on TV." For the next wow. several years, I would buy him first a VHS, 
of the Yule Log. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Then a DVD of the Yule Log. And then one year I found the Yule Log in HD on, on, on Blu-ray. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, and then I ran out of ways to give him a Yule Log, so I stopped <laughs> doing that gag. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's hilarious, That's dude. That's hilarious, dude. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's, let's go on to track four here. Um, I had, don't have the translation set up just yet, but uh, any real, while I'm doing this, any thoughts on that last one? It sounds very it sad. Sounds very sad. I, I, just like you said, I, like couldn't, said I, couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't really, really imagine what it would imagine. mean over there. I mean, do you have any ideas? I mean, the the plot it sounded like was two people were. I mean, it, it, they, they're they still alive, right? They didn't die or anything, right? <laughs> I, uh, n- no? <laughs> I, I mean, it, I, I couldn't tell what exactly was going on. Of course, again, we, we're going off Google Translate, but the whole two people, and, and I have I have no other thoughts other than I'm, you know, I it's it's definitely a slower song on the Metal Christmas album. And there's yeah. there's my brilliant analysis. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I feel like it could be a carol, um, a Christmas carol. I feel okay, but I mean, because I mean, when you think about like like I tend to like you know the, the happy go lucky, funny Christmas type songs. You know, the first four or five songs on my Christmas playlist when you know when we decorated our tree this year and you know was uh, uh, the hat I got for Christmas is too big. Um, uh, I'm getting nothing for Christmas, of course. The Italian standard, Dominic, the oh, Italian yes. Christmas donkey. Yes, um, yes, yes. Which is funny know. because I actually was just listening to a podcast this week, and that's what they opened up with. Was eat all, yeah. eat all. <laughs> it's because it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> it's, it's greatest. And, you know, and so that's the kind of stuff that I like. And then I, you know, and of course Christmas and Hollis because you got to have that, right? Go on mm-hmm. DMC. Um, but there are definitely, like, if you listen to the array of Christmas music that's out there, some of that stuff's very sad. But can, can we just, can we just stop the podcast? Can, can we just, can we just stop for a minute and talk about something? I have a very serious subject to bring up. Have sure. you ever heard the song, Baby, It's Cold Outside? Oh, no. <laughs> I know where you're going with this. <laughs> is that not the rapiest fucking song you've ever heard? Oh my gosh, dude! Um, I was actually just watching Elf earlier tonight, and I don't know if you remember that particular spot in the movie, but she's Zoe Dash Zoe Zoe Dashnell is in a shower and in the bathroom at at the uh, wherever she's working at. Nobody's around except for, of course, Will Ferrell's character, you know, Buddy the Elf. And she's singing that song, naked in the shower. And, of course, Buddy makes his way in there, enthralled by her lovely voice, and sits there on the counter and begins to sing with her. And, of course, she freaks out. But speaking of rape, I mean, (laughs) it was uh, (laughs) – it's funny that 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 scene happened the way that it did and used that exact same song. Um, Jeez Louise. You cannot cannot escape – uh, the rapiness of the lyrics in that particular piece. I mean, I, I don't know if you watch South Park at all, but they're now referring to the terrible things that Bill Cosby did as a hot Cosby. That a whole hot, song's just a hot Cosby. Jeez. <laughs> oh, gosh. He's like, he, I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. You know, I've got to go away. And he's like, let me pour you another drink. Dude. And let's see when this song came out too, because I'm curious. Any idea? I mean, do you give me give me your best guess of the date in which that song came out. Oh gosh, I'll go with 1955. That's always a popular year for songs. And it sounds like something that would have. Okay, so it's a we got a first video or first thing is coming up. Uh oh, I hit a video. I was um, close. 1944. 44. Yeah. Wow. So, Baby, it's cold outside was written by Frank Loesser in 1944. How we got like this far off topic? That's my own fault. Um, it's a call and response duet in which one of the singers, usually performed by a male, attempts to convince a guest. 
usually performed by a female voice. They should stay together for a romantic evening because the weather is cold and the trip home would be difficult. Uh, yes. Background. Loster wrote the duet in 1944 and premiered the song with his wife, Lynn Garland, at their Navarro Hotel housewarming party and performed it toward the end of the evening, signifying the guests that it was nearly time to end the party. Garland considered it their song and was furious when Lost wrote the song to MGM. Looking off the wiki here, I don't know if that's where you're at or not, but uh, let's... Okay, lyrics. Under lyrics, as a duet, the lyrics form a conversation with interjections by the wolf, cause some interaction... The wolf is in quotes, by the way. Cause some interaction between the vocalists. In recent years, there has been criticism of the song stemming from a modernistic reading of the wolf-slash-mouse dynamic as being sexually predatory. No shit. No shit. Put it on. What was it? What'd you What'd you call it? It was uh, the No Shit Sherlock. No, oh, no, yeah, no, no, no shit Sherlock science. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Studies show that men have penises and girls have vaginas. Yes, we know. No shit Sherlock science. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, I'd like to be one of those scientists that gets there and sits there and gets paid to come up with these great. Great revelations that we find on Facebook each and every day. Studies, wa- study, water is wet. <laughs> Pay me. <laughs> um, <laughs> the readers cite certain lines as being questionable. Questionable, Jesse Starcher. Including, <laughs> I, simply must, <laughs> I simply must go. The answer is no. I've got to go home. Dude, if you tried this in college right now, you would be arrested and put in prison. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, uh, man. Well, at least anyway. it's, you know, I don't know what, I don't, I, 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 I yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> There's nothing to say other than my point with all of this was Christmas music, the array of Christmas music that's out there goes, you know, from the, from the silly to the pretty to the rapey. <laughs> yeah, and and I, I, I think it it, somewhere. it goes, and I'll just this will be my last thing to say on it. But uh, it really shows how far I would say that our generation compared to the generation back in 1944 um, really had a different conception of what innocence was. It's sure. so different now compared to what it was back then. So different. And all innocence I, slash ignorance almost. Well, I would love to interview him, you know, back in 1944 and ask him, how is this not rapey? <laughs> yeah. And, and really get some, and, and, and get some honest feedback on, like, I had never, no, I'm not trying to force a woman against her will to do anything sexually she's not consenting to. What, what do you mean? You know, and and like, well, do you understand that if you liquor a woman up, she's no longer, uh, you know, in full, in in full uh, understanding of what she might might may or may not be doing, and that constitutes rape. Not it's in nineteen forty four, did he? I know, <laughs> so, man. Different time. It's weird. Yeah, it's it's very well. Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, <laughs> <moving> on. <laughs> we just ruined one of those great favorite songs of yours. <laughs> Just stick with Dominic, the Italian Christmas song. You'll be safe that way. <laughs> it's nice and simple. <laughs> <laughs> Santa's got a little helper. His name is Dominic. That's all you need to know. <laughs> all right, so this next, this next one, people are listening to this going, what the fuck am I listening to? <laughs> this next one's called A Sledding Man. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this in the actual finish. It's just, it translates to a, 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 a sledding man.
sledding man. Effective false is something in Finnish. They are mocking me as place. <laughs> Dodge okay. pig. Dodge pig? <laughs> That's the next line. Google At translate. turn, there is a false. I cry and Ponkaisen trip. Again, something Finnish. I am a sledding hill man. The Finnish line, Keaton, forehead just ties. Victory for, and then who knows? I get magazine skipping. <laughs> yeah, the, wow. the, the count to the fullest down in Caledon. I, Nelane, I choose to smile, rock attitude. Rock oh, attitude. I'm going to start telling people this, that I choose to smile, rock attitude. <laughs> We're back to the pigs again. Pigs all must skip. And the snow upon splash when you turn the sled mound. Okay, so. I, it's Angry Bird. <laughs> it's Dodge <Dutch Pig. laughs> which is a new sport that I'm gonna I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna I'm going to. I feel like I feel like kids should play Dodge Pig when they're in Dodge um, Pig. Not to be confused with Pig Dodge, which is is that's that's famous out there in West Virginia. <sighs> <laughs> okay, um, but I, I feel like kids in, 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 in at least junior high gym class should should be throwing pigs at one another. I think that would be hilarious. Okay. Thank you. Um, so again, the holiday songs not don't necessarily always revolve around Christmas. Um, they can also revolve around building a snowman, snow angels, sledding. Um, what's a, what's a good sledding one? I'm I know I'm missing an obvious one, and I can't think of it. Uh, over the river and through the woods. <laughs> How's that for you? That's a good sledding no. song. Sure, sure. Um, not what I was thinking, but okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for sledding songs, you said, right? Yeah. Okay. Either to the grandmother's house we go. Um, and that's a. Sl- I mean, that's all about sledding, I believe, isn't it? At least that's what happens in my head when that song starts. Don't make me a crazy man here, Mark. Um, let's see. A good. I, I mean, synonymous with Christmas is the sleigh. That's that. That is. That, I, that's what I always think of. Um, you know, when I, I when I'm. I always think of that particular song too, uh, in regards to like any type of sleigh ride. Um, and then, of course, and the so can play. all the yeah. hills we go, laughing all the way. Ha, ha, ha. What is that one? That's... Jingle Bells? Yeah, okay. There we go. <laughs> Jingle Bells, yes. That's a good one. And, and so, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, that particular track, definitely on the heavy side. Uh Did I lose you? Did I lose you? Oh, this thing, uh, all of a sudden it started playing. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah, you must have. Uh, something happened with Skype there. Um, okay. What'd you pull up? Um, I started on something, and then I thought you were disconnected, so I shut the page now. Um, no, no, Jingle Bells, I think, is what I was thinking of. Okay. Um, all the hills we go, laughing all the way. Da, 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 da. Okay. So... I, I feel like that song fits in, into into there, to that category. Because as I said, not every holiday song is revolving around Christmas in and of itself. Um, you know, there's this thing you do with walking in a winter wonderland. You know, it's just it's a celebration of, uh, of snow and of wintertime and, you know, having a gay experience out there in the elements. And in this instance, gay does me happy. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, let me let me go ahead and tell you here. I found I found a nice little fact uh, website here from the History of Christmas dot com. The from I'll, and I'll, I'll intersperse these between tracks. In Finland, the Christmas tree is set up on Christmas Eve, not Thanksgiving Eve, people. Christmas Eve. <laughs> Apples and other fruits. Candies, paper flags, cotton, and tinsel are used as decoration, and candles are used for lighting it. 
There you go. Fact, that's fact number one. We'll, we'll, we'll do some more here in between tracks. Okay. Well, this next one is quite simply called Heavy Metal Julu, otherwise known as uh, Heavy Metal Christmas. Heavy Metal! Kirjeen Ameriikasta oli serkku tulossa jouluksi Suomeen. Se tykkää tanssimusiikista yleks, eli taitaa olla syytä huoleen. Heitä kauvoi hattu roskikseen. Ei meillä täällä tuollaista pehmommusaa kuunnella. Heavy metal. Sit on tää kaikki tullut taivaasta. Täällä on niin kylmä, että mä lähden haneen. Pietiin serkku suoraan saunamaan. Löylyt hurjat otettiin ja kaikki hankeen vetettiin. Heavy metal. Well, metal. metal. That's a pretty right, good track. Well, me, I that was actually really good, I thought. Yeah, that's that's one of my favorites on here. Let me quick uh, do a pause for the cause and uh, bring out, because it's a Christmas miracle, everybody. He's finally here. Not Santa Claus, but the metal but the metal coop himself, Mr. Robert Cooper. How do you do, sir? Uh, ho, ho, ho. I just got off of Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> Man. They they working you tough there, Coop. Has it, has it been a rough day? I smuggled the Mexicans. They had me unloading the truck, and then they had me close outside because nobody because the guy who was closing called out. So, well, didn't, you tell us a, didn't you tell me on a podcast? Huh? No. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, <laughs> uh, I know you've got this business to run, but uh, I'm going to talk about children's metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> went over went over real well. It went over like a fart at a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you, you're just in time. You've missed the discussion of rapey Christmas music like Baby It's Cold Outside. So, um, oh, unfortunately, God. we're not in like warm territory. But uh, we can talk about this. We can talk about heavy metal Christmas. Heavy metal Jolu. How far into the album have we made it? That would be track well, just, five, sir. Yeah, just about halfway. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, well, let's see, till about halfway part in the album, uh, I listened to the title track off of uh, this album, and I was like, this is okay, but I watched the video of it, and I was just kind of felt kind of uncomfortable the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, there's a lot of children here, and I don't really know how to how to react to this. Huh. <laughs> like, because cause I got the idea of it, I'm like, okay, kids are jumping around, they're having fun, dinosaurs, yeah. I kind of felt uncomfortable, but then when I threw this album on while I was playing a game, it kind of blended to the background, and I realized that if I'm not looking at the children and the dinosaurs, this is solid music. It's pretty fun, and I don't speak yeah. the language, so I can't even comment on uh, lyrical content because it's for children. Google speaks its <laughs> language, and we've found out tonight that Mark has been translating some fun, fun stuff. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I, such as I'm such sure as dodge, pig dodge. <laughs> pig dodge. Yeah, we'll talk later about uh, we'll talk later about pig dodge. Um, oh no! <laughs> yeah, Christmas, I'll have to say, Christmas music in general kind of pisses me off. I don't like it because it really does. It, it doesn't do a whole lot for me. Like it's one of those I've experienced it enough to where the initial uh, newness of it. Has worn down. Did someone do a hot coffee to baby? Did someone do a hot coffee huh? to you on baby? It's cold outside. Oh jeez. No, <laughs> not quite. Oh god, 
Maybe it's cold outside. Yeah, my cellmate did that. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like Christmas, just like I was discussing country music today, I feel like they both kind of involve waves of nostalgia that come over you, and there's a very, like, homey feeling to it. I feel like that's what Christmas music is really about. It's kind of about tradition and, you know, loving your family and your neighbors and a fat guy in a suit and stuff like that. And I don't know, it doesn't quite resonate with me as much, and I get really tired of hearing it a lot. Like, I hear it a lot, a lot. Like, it is it is quite the hemorrhoid in my day. Well, I'm well, I know. I, I love Christmas together. Like, you know, hell, I say I love Christmas because people actually, like, want to do good things for one another and are somewhat caring and they're not trying to fuck each other over every, uh, you know, every minute of the day. And I love that. There's a great sense of humanity to it. It's just I get tired of the music because I work retail. Mm. <laughs> yeah, okay. but this Christmas music, this is fun because it's in a foreign language. Okay. Well, I'm going to ruin that for you, and I'm going to read you the lyrics to uh, to Heavy Metal Christmas is how this is Ooh. translated. How dare you. <laughs> Okay, um, and I, I'm, I've already gone over this for the audience, but for your sake, I'm going to tell you, Google Translate, not the greatest translation. It, um, God. <laughs> it's very, very literal, and it doesn't quite get the nuance of language, so this uh, sounds no. like gobbledygook a lot of times. But uh, Jesse and I, being smart fellas, we, we've been able to pick out basically the essence of the song from the gobbledygook. So, okay, so heavy metal, heavy metal. To mailing a letter to America, there was a cousin coming to Finland for Christmas. He likes country music. No, I'm not even joking about this. This is exactly <laughs> what it says. He likes country music. Yuck. Right. That's okay. what I say. That's a little. That's a little bit of propaganda there. I, I mean, there, there's definitely there's a whole. There's a whole I've taken that are better than yuck. half of country music. <laughs> All right, so he likes, country, he, likes, he likes country music. Yuck. That is, seems to be reason for concern. <laughs> throw, All right. a cowboy hat, throw a cowboy hat in the trash. Not like the, not like that we have here. Pemom Husa, listen. Heavy, heavy metal, metal Christmas. There is a leather trousers. <laughs> ribbon belt. <laughs> and, some really seals finish. in flavor. <laughs> heavy, heavy metal, metal Christmas. Um, some, some, someone in fin- Finland swinging head and tupla blasphemy. head. Out no. Blow. Cousin came off the plane. Would be the first contact with the snow. So therefore, all Tulu is this heaven. Here on is so cold. I convergence him. We taken was taken to a cousin directly to the sauna. Bathing was badass, and all projects jumped. I mean, wait, 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 I mean, wait! wait. Did, did, did you just say bathing? Bathing was badass. That is correct, sir. Bathing oh. was badass. All right. That, all right. So that, 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 that is a couple of words that I've never used before in in conjunction with each other. I've never got out of the bathtub and said that. I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. <laughs> Well, I mean, without bathing, you're going to have lots of bad ass. Yeah, that is true. I, you can't deny that. <sighs> wow. Okay. So we, we get basically what's happening in this song is that a cousin from America came to Finland for Christmas, and he was obviously a country and western Cowboy. type fellow. Yeah. yeah. So he's the stereotypical um, American. <laughs> That's right. We're all John Everybody Lane here from Texas. America. And the whole thing Yeehaw. is about, like, it, it's sort of a country mouse, city mouse type of thing where uh, where the, the American cowboy comes to Finland and it's like, oh, don't be an American cowboy. See all this great Finnish stuff and be cool and Finnish and have a hot, badass bath. <laughs> that's, that's what I got from that. Amazing <laughs> hmm. with badass. How does one be cool and Finnish? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. man. We have to remember here that these guys are singing to children, okay? We've got. Well, you know to who else sang sang to children? The Hitler Youth. 
<laughs> oh, they didn't wow. dumb it down. I'm kidding. Oh, God. I don't know why I wanted that one. Because I actually like this band. I like their message. They, they it, it, it just, it makes me, well, of course, I know we're going by Google Translate, and we have no idea. But I, I really wonder if they're actually saying badass. That makes well, me... I think so, but I think it's like badass, like, I, look, it, obviously the song is very pro-Finn, pro-Finland, pro, pro mm-hmm. um, and I think if I, if I could sum it up in like 10 words or less, it's basically, we're Finnish, we're awesome, come be like us, you, you American cowboy, you yeah, know, like, and, and instead, cowboy of having a country music, have, instead of having a country music Christmas, have a, uh, have a, have a heavy metal Christmas. You know, be be one of us Finns. So I think that, that to me is what the song is about. Okay. Uh, I just thought it was about heavy metal Christmas, personally. I think I didn't quite look too deeply into into the Looking Glass. <laughs> I, was just having, I, I was listening metal. to it. I'm like, oh, this is great, match. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool shit. I enjoyed it. So this podcast would be five minutes long if I didn't do this. <laughs> well, oh, oh yeah. I mean, this would be. Uh, I don't know. We'd come up with something, don't we always? Well, hey, hey. Let me let me give you the let me give you the finished Christmas fact here. This this next one, okay? The main I'm dish. You, uh, you let me finish, sir. <laughs> the main <laughs> dish of dinner for Christmas was boiled codfish, served snowy white and fluffy with allspice, boiled potatoes, and cream sauce. The dried cod has been soaked for a week in a lye solution, then in clear water to soften it to the right texture. Only on the menu is roast suckling pig or a roasted fresh ham, mashed potatoes, and vegetables. You know who else is a codfish? Who? Peter Pan. I was going to say uh, Captain Hook. Billy's are on the same page there. I, mean, wasn't that, I think that was that was the joke from uh, Peter Pan, right? Captain Hook, yeah. the codfish. Yeah. <laughs> codfish, codfish, codfish. I, I don't um, know why that's such an insult, but uh, I don't know. Maybe they didn't like the finish. <laughs> well, I will tell you this. There's a book out there. I, I am, For a long time, when I was a smart person, I used to read a lot of books about um, about the economy and the history of economies and Food that and now you're here, are, and now I'm here. Um, and, and just so there's a book I haven't read the book, but I uh, um, but I've what the book is about has been talked about in other books that I've read uh, about how cod, like cod, was like a like a huge staple item in the in the global economy during the age of, I want to say the age of exploration. Like cod started in one place and it just traveled the world. Um, I, I know the book I'm thinking of now. It's called Fish on Friday. Like the the reason why uh, Catholics went to fish on Friday was be, was because of the, the the bountiful amount of uh, cod fishing there was back in the day, and um, there was other reasons for it too. But it was completely dictated by the economy of fish, and not by anything having to do with actual religion. And that's that you know it was, it was funny. Um, I was talking to my wife. I said. And you know, when you talk in terms of like religious history, how much of, how much can be explained by just human behavior and not you know anything spiritual like the Bible? There's all these different gospels that just didn't make the cut. You know, like there's a gospel of Mary Magdalene, a gospel of Judas. Um, there's all these different gospels, and it's just like you know, are we putting this in there? No, fuck that, get that out of here. We're only going with these four, and that's it. That's the Bible, okay, folks. You know, well, they, 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 it was a whole fit our message. Mm. Was that? I feel like that sort of boils down to like, well, I don't know, quite what's the message. Well, uh, you know, you know what? We'll uh, get back to you on that. <laughs> right. Probably like, man, this thing is as, this thing is as big as it needs to be. Uh, we don't need to make it any bigger. So, like, there's... you know, anything else, we're gonna really turn people off. <laughs> I feel like we're saying I feel like we're saying everything we need to say here with, uh, <laughs> with yeah. just these four gospels. Get the gospel of Judas out of here. Some um, yeah, some some prophet was just couldn't write and was some editor's nightmare and was just like, screw this guy. I'm not even putting. I, no way is he getting in the Bible. There's no way. Yeah. Right. 
All right, so now that I've pissed off all those people who are truly religious and don't know about the uh, the whole meeting that took place that made the Bible, let's get on to the next song. Um, <laughs> read, read your religious history, folks. I'm not making this shit up. Uh, this is track six. This is called uh, Sorustin uh, Atoilita, uh, which translates to um, Sorustin Eve Evening. <laughs> That's all right. Cool translate. It's my favorite thing ever. All right, here we go. Track six. <laughs> here is and this is this is definitely very very Finnish very power metal this right, right from the get go sorcerers on the mountain is a hard hustle <laughs> sorry um, hustle was, loyalty and respect yo sorry oh, sorcerers on God. the mountain <laughs> Sor- sorcerers on the mountain you can't see me no I'm about to oh on me. no okay no <laughs> I want to it, damn it. I'm so gullible. <laughs> Sorcerers on the Mountain is a hard hustle. It is becoming a second sour, rustin Christmas. They cleaners and places to put into shape small debris remains it is not going to harm. And Riffy Raffy, and if you if you were here from the beginning of the uh, the uh, album review, we know that Riffy Raffy is in the band. Uh, Riffy Raffy, what does he play? Riffy Raffy, where are you, Riffy Raffy? Uh, the, the, the Riffy Raffy plays the guitar. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, and Riffy Raffy plays the guitar when you arrive. Say, Rye, it's time to create Christmases. Rye, and the land will bring peace. Rye, it's a good feeling gets rye and the Christmas wishes. Heavy Saurus, this is like a rap uh, song. Heavy Saurus spruce and staggering. It's probably a 10 meter. <laughs> Muffy looking for decorations and the top of the and the top of star. It is part of the May Day supplies. Millie Pilly food manufacturers. Okay, so this whole, this whole song features is they're talking about themselves. This is the band. Oh, okay, all later right. On, sure. Later on in the song, they say dinosaur spend Christmas in his cave. I guess, sure. All right. <laughs> so uh, so this is heavy sores singing about themselves celebrating Christmas. That's that's what I'm gathering here, Mister Cooper. <laughs> I feel like yeah. Gavin, you're, you're struggling with this one. He, yeah, he has a lot to add, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you people sent me 33 messages. Oh, well, damn, Coop, <laughs> we didn't know if you was alive, man. The lows had me buried. Uh, <laughs> I said you were among the... Jesse's like, where's Coop? And I'm like, he's among the missing. I don't know what to tell you. I could be among the living. He could be. All right. Uh, so, do we have Jesse? You got anything for me there? Because I mean, I read it. It's fine. It's it's them talking about themselves celebrating Christmas. Very very rap motif. You know, talking about yourself in the in in, in the first person. Very weird. Um, that's about all I got on it. I mean, it's, yeah. again, but musically, it sounds like a power metal song. Um, but I'm very much more interested in, in the lyrics. So, what what were your thoughts? 
I can't add much to that. Other, I mean, you know, let me tell you what I think of when I I thought of this a few minutes ago, and I want to know because this has nothing to do with the album, but it puts me in the mind of this for some reason. Mark Radlich, did you own the Alvin and the Chipmunks Christmas tape or that whatever uh, it was called? Yeah, I'm sure I own some version of the world. original. I'm sure I own some version of the original Alvin and the Chipmunks. Coop, what By the way, what, I have, since you brought this up, I have to know, since you have, you have a tween and then you have two very young children, will you be taking your children for uh, Star Wars weekend to go see Alvin and the Chipmunks, the road <laughs> chip? Not happening, sir. Alvin and the <laughs> Chipmunks are not anything that is very popular in this uh, in this particular household. Thank goodness. No, so that is, that is a negative. Even. Not even the middle child, the boy? Nope. No way. He, dude, I can tell you right now, I, what he is all about is YouTube. And that's I could probably name off ten YouTube stars that this kid watches religiously, starting oh, with Mark should Flyer. Watch, he should absolutely then watch Gem and the Holograms. I'm sure he'll be one of the five people that <laughs> like the movie. <laughs> Are they actually going to go to release that on DVD at any point? I know you said they um, pulled up the theaters pretty damn quick. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, maybe, maybe, I'm sure they'll put it out on something at the very least on demand. Because what, what could it possibly cost them? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the uh, my my wife, my, my daughter has made some noise about wanting to go see Alvin and the Chipmunks: The Road Chip, and she's not necessarily like she likes playing with the purple lightsaber that she got when we went to. Um, we went to Hollywood Studios one time, and she has like a little Princess Leia dress-up thing. But as far as really being into Star Wars, she hasn't quite made that connection yet. And my other, my son, my other kid's too young, so they will not be seeing Star Wars: The Force Awakens when I go see it, more than likely. But there is a there is a really good chance that my wife is going to be dragged off to go see Alvin and the Chipmunks: The Road Chip. Anyway, cause you better get her a on. big bottle of wine or something. And, and thanks. <laughs> At least to give that to her before she goes, then maybe, you know, drive her there and drop her off and pick her up later. Yeah, she's going to have a paper bag with a bottle of vodka in it. <laughs> yep. You can't bring that into the theater. Oh, well, maybe I can. I've got a big purse. Trust me, we've used that one before. If it's in the paper bag, it's legal. Um, all right, so what was your question regarding Alvin and the Chipmunks, the original? I was just curious if you guys own that, because that, for some reason, puts me – this puts me in the mind of that. You got – uh, you know, five inanimate characters. I didn't say inanimate, but you know what I mean. They're they're fictional, uh, almost cartoonish characters that are coming out with a Christmas album. Um, I can't say I know too many other. Uh, the most popular one that I remember is the Alvin and the Chipmunks. Now, Coop, you groaned. Did you did you absolutely hate that album or something? Alvin, Alvin and the Chipmunks make me grumble. It's <laughs> All so- right. Squeaky and craptacular. Craptacular. <laughs> well, that's all I had to add, Mark. We can go on to the next track, man. Oh, you got me curious now because I have to. I have to wonder if Alvin and the Chipmunks, like, how did that actually start? Like, and I'm looking at this Alvin and the Chipmunks. Originally, David Seville and the Chipmunks are simply the Chipmunks is an American animated music group created by Ross Bag the Zazarian Senior. For a novelty record in 1958, um, just into the. I, I want to read more about this because I have to figure like they there was a there was an original song, and they just had it sped up, and they 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 went with it, you know. Uh-huh. I, I remember like uh, Pat Oswalt talks about how he had the, the he had the thing on vinyl, and they would slow it down to I guess proper speed, and it sounds just like. Three suicidal men singing a Christmas song. <laughs> when so, does it more on it, was it, joke it, Was it that particular um uh that particular one that you said that was released in what would you say, fifty eight? Uh nineteen fifty eight, yes sir. Okay. Does it say which song it was? Um I mean, I like know they had it was the first one. Okay. 1958, Rod Bagdazaz released a novelty song as David Seville about being an unsuccessful 
have love until he found a witch doctor who told him how to woo his woman. I love the song, by the way. The song was sung by Baghdadian in a normal voice, except for the magic words. Then first in Baghdadian's pitched up pre chipmunk voice, then in the two heads between his pitched up voice and his normal voice. The words are totally nonsense. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ting, tang, walla, walla, bing, bang. Oh, I yeah. I that to my son all the time. He thinks oh. it's hilarious. It's made its way in. I'm telling you, and, and Chipmunk Christmas, man. All I can think of is Alvin screaming about a damn hula hoop, and you know, <laughs> Dave, Dave yelling, Alvin. I mean, it had its place. I probably wore that tape out to be honest as a kid, and I'm wonder. I was just curious if it, you guys had the same thing. So that's uh, that's interesting. Yes. Yes, see, right. see, I we I can I we don't worry. This this show can last for three hours. Trust me, me and Coop can. It it no problem. <laughs> yes, I've, I've seen your Woods of Ypres, uh recordings. All right, this next one. Well, he, he's seen them. He's not listening, but he's seen them. Dude, it's got to be pretty daunting when you see three hours staring back at you, and you're like, oh you know, shit, oh, I've got to listen. It, to it was it was four hours. Don't kid <laughs> ourselves. That's true. All right, so the middle of four hours on this one. This next one is uh, in Finnish. It's Jul Puki. Um, it's translated to Santa Claus. Is that you, Santa Claus? Eve, we conjecture whether it will buck at all. We expected, and the time is calculated, <laughs> when someone knocks on the door. This sounds now like Doc Brown. The, <laughs> <laughs> now we need the yard. I think fall. Someone steps in and it's knocking on the door. There it is. So incredible. We welcome such welcome. Generation gets daring to sit down together while singing Christmas. We know it. The haste. That's the haste. You gotta visit. You cannot continue to live in. Although annoying, so many million other children waste gifts. In another year or something, Christmas again, when you come to us again, gifts to give. So, I'm hey, getting I, with this. I wanted to tell you Happy Hanukkah, by the way. Mazel tov. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Can I talk about that for just a moment since you brought it up? Yeah. So, like, I'm only Jewish for the jokes, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know any Hebrew. I didn't go to temple except if, like, I had a Jewish friend growing up. I would sometimes go to temple with my friend um, more as a fact-finding mission than anything else or because I was staying with that friend for the weekend and that's what that friend had to do. And so it was, you know... I had to go where they went, and they went to temple. Um, but, like, I wasn't raised Jewish in any way, shape, or form. So that's why it kind of irritates me sometimes when people, like, will make Jew jokes at my expense. It's like, 
okay, but there's so many other goofy things about me you can make fun of. Being a Jew hardly relates. Um, cause my mom's Jewish, so technically by Jewish tradition, by Jewish law, I'm supposed to be, but I'm not raised in, you know, like I, I was brought up with more Catholic traditions. Like, I, mm-hmm. like if I were to count how many times I've been to say midnight mass for Christmas or church versus how many times I've been to temple, uh, the Christians win <laughs> <laughs> every time. Um, so like a scorecard. The, <laughs> if you look at the scoreboard, Christians, 10, Jew, 2. Um, <laughs> so imagine, you know, so, so knowing that, I mean, you know, my father's an atheist. My mom doesn't really practice. We sort of had a beat out of her. Um, just didn't, you know, just, just, just not something that we did. Um, and, you know, I practice, you know, the, you know, the, the basically like the, um, the mainstream traditions in the Judeo Christian American world. But that's it. I don't go to church. Um, I don't pray. I don't do any of that stuff. So my wife recently got it. I have like baskets of laundry that haven't been put away. But she decided that we were going to start celebrating. We were going to start celebrating Hanukkah. Uh. I have baskets right? of laundry that haven't been put away. But my gosh, we're we're celebrating. Well, we're gonna celebrate Hanukkah. We're gonna add something into our already like cram schedule of things to do. <laughs> um a garage full of presents that need to be wrapped, but let's celebrate Hanukkah. Um and she so she came to me, she was like, Like, how do you feel about celebrating Hanukkah? I'm like, I feel no way about it because I'm like I don't celebrate any Jewish anything. Like, mm. <laughs> like we don't we don't set the table for Elijah. We don't do anything. We don't. I, I don't know any Hebrew. Um, I know more Italian than I know Hebrew. And she's like, well, what if I just did all the work? I got a menorah. Um, I bought the presents for the kids, you know. And, like, she really went, like, crazy with it, too, in the sense of, like, she sat down and she looked at, like, what you're supposed to give kids. in Because now Hanukkah is developed into Christmas for Jews, right? You know, on the, on the first day of Hanukkah, you get what you would, op- you know, you would you get a, a present that you would open if you were a kid at Christmas time. There's no difference anymore. But she actually went through the steps of, of figuring out, like, like on this day, you give a dreidel. And on this day, you give, I don't know, fucking burr. Um, I, I, <laughs> I don't know how you're supposed to do it. But that's the whole reason why they, there's been songs and there's been sort of jokes about, you know, being a Jew on Christmas, because Jews don't get shit. You know, they get, like, candy and fruit. It's and the back to school holiday. Yeah. And the um, of one Lewis Black. They're not supposed to get an Xbox. Uh, <laughs> that, that that became an American thing. Uh, but she went through all these things about, like, you know, we were going to, you know, with my two and my four-year-old, or my one and my four-year-old, that we were going to do all the traditional steps of Hanukkah. And I was like, Sure. I don't understand why we're doing this. Neither one of them are going to get it, you know. So I just I had to share that. I don't. I'm I'm so confused well, with my wife. Like, you're, like, she's wanting to bring a little bit of heritage into the house, which is pretty cool. I mean, I guess I, I'll give her points for that one. Um, a heritage that I didn't actually grow up with. I, <laughs> well. Well, you know, uh, yeah, I want to know, at the end of all this, I want to know how everything turns out. That's what I want to know. Because I remember you mentioned this a while back on another podcast, and that's kind of why I brought it up. So um, yeah. well, I want to know why, or I want to know I want to know how everything goes. Because is this actually like the first time you like straight up in your adult life tried to, tried to, tried to celebrate it in, in any way? Yeah, she re- she like legit bought a menorah with candles. Yeah. Well, I can't <laughs> wait to hear about it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's going very well. I have to be honest with you. I don't know. I don't remember like what day we're on. <laughs> but uh, she's doing well. she, the other thing that she decided that she was going to do this year was she was she bought like twenty four or twenty five cr- children's Christmas books, and each night the kids pick a new book to read. And, you know, it's a, a different book. Um, that she's been really good with. The other, this Hanukkah thing, not going very well. <laughs> Once again, Hanukkah's losing to to, to Christmas. <laughs> well, 
Uh, well, hopefully, uh, you got to find a way to make it cool then, man. Get in there. Is it, like, horrible to go in there and, like, start giving Xboxes out on certain days? I mean, come on. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't too bad. Well, neither one of my kids is getting an Xbox. Let's start there. Uh, well, you know, you don't – you. Sh- You've got to understand the whole, okay, kid, here you go. And then, of course, it's a gift that you actually wanted. You know, kind of like Homer Simpson and the bowling ball. Okay? One of my, one of my kids got a Barbie Power Wheels, okay? I think they're going to be just fine. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought maybe you were excited about trying to ride in it or something. <laughs> nope. <laughs> just, just bumping, like, ugly by uh, what's-his-face while riding in a Power Wheels. It'd be awesome. <laughs> Five miles an hour, baby. Dun, 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 dun. I, I feel like you should buy two power wheels and then, like, sit in it with one foot in each <laughs> and just fucking floor it. It'll be like, it's my fucking chariot. Oh, yeah. Well, I could do something like that because, like, we didn't get it for my son, but my in-laws got him, um, like, a quad. A, um, you know, I got a baby quad. Not you know, He's not... He's not, you know, really two years old, fucking rocking out, uh, you know, in his, uh, you know, big old machine there, like a little baby quad that they sell um, that they got from Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> <laughs> Off one foot, I can have one foot on the uh, on the quad and the other foot on my in, in the Barbie Tyco fucking Power Wheels. Really fantastic. Picks or it didn't happen. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of things that didn't happen, here's track eight. This is uh, Joel Lou Humus, and it has no translation. It must be a name. I love Humus. Translate. 
God. Ugh. This is amusing. <laughs> this is oh so amusing. Okay. Let me what see if I can there? call in from another. Well, I was actually trying to. Is, am I still able to call in from another phone? <laughs> Did you I say guess? can you? What? I guess. Why do you need to call in from another phone? Because this phone's dying. Oh yeah, go 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 do. Jesse will talk okay. to me. You go you go hang up and call in from another phone. Ah, uh, well, okay. So that particular that particular song is about Christmas dinner, and you said something about the star. What what did it say about the star at the, in that near the beginning it's about there? The Moravian. It's probably all about the Moravians. <laughs> I didn't understand? <laughs> I don't understand. Um, it's a humanoid star. Now hum- the at the table is a humanoid stars. Well, that one that wouldn't scare me at all. You know, I sit down at Christmas dinner and there's a humanoid humanoid star sitting there. It might it's Starman from the rest the Nintendo Pro Wrestling game. Yes. Well, I I, <laughs> I don't I don't feel like it's Starman. Um, I do I, maybe something akin to Oh Holy Night maybe. Sure. The stars are bright and shining. You got it again. Sitting at your table. You, you can't take the stuff too literally. Um, Why not? You, you know. Yeah, because you're you're gonna, you're gonna miss stuff here. Remember, we're doing the best we can. <laughs> we're doing the best we can. This song's written in Finnish, so that are not that are not translated very well. Ed, give me nightmares. Humanoid stars <laughs> sitting at the dinner table. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I wanna pass. I'll tell you what though. If I had the opportunity, I would love to go over to Finland and and just spend like a week there. Um just from what I've seen on Periscope, because I for some reason I'm drawn to like you know, that particular area of the world to check out periscopes and of course it's always at night, which is like five o'clock in the morning over there. But it just looks and and I just I'd love to get over there and visit it at some point. So uh much love to the finish here, even though we might be giving you a hard time in regards to Google Translate. Uh it's still some place I'd love to visit. It's not on us, it's on Google, I promise. That's right, damn it. That is right. I mean I'm enjoying the album. Um I, I, I kind of I'm with Coop in that it's better to sort of just listen to it and not worry about, you know, what they're saying and <laughs> it's appealing Tonally, you know, and I've heard enough Finnish heavy metal to not really worry about like what they're saying. It's more sort of taking the the experience as a whole and not sort of breaking it down to its elements. But uh, like like I said, the purposes of you know, like I wanted to like I almost wasn't sure if this was a real Christmas album. <laughs> so I'm at least glad that we went through the lyrics, and I am reassured they did indeed do a holiday album here. Because, like, you have no way of knowing that, like, just listening to it and not knowing Finnish. I hear you. Oh, wow. Oh, Google Translate, I love you. Track number seven, Grandma's Moped. What? <laughs> <laughs> I must have missed that. Listen, listen right. track number nine, The Backyard. Track number ten, The Zoo Night Watchman. The Zoo Night Watchman. <laughs> this is track number nine, Lumisota. This is translated to Snowball Fight.
Do you think, like, somewhere across the world there's a, there's a guy in Finland doing a podcast of music reviews who's doing this but with Limp Biscuit <laughs> and having to run it through a translator? I would love to see that. <laughs> oh, man. There's a guy like me just reading the lyrics in English like, I did it all for the nookie. <laughs> I did it all for the what? What is Nookie? That's not a word. Like, <laughs> what, what track was? What was this track called, by the way? Like the original tags. Lumi Soda. Hmm. Lumi Soda. Oh no. L U M I S O A T. S O T A. Sorry. I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah. Hi, tired. I'm dad. <laughs> Oh, I love dad jokes. Let's see. I think that's what it is. Oh, God. This is like trying to find your... It's like trying to find a hay in the needle stack. Mm. Let's see. You said it was track number nine? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Because I've got Taka Fia for that. Because that one was called The Backyard. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Are you on the right oh, album? Yeah. You put up the wrong yeah. album earlier. I had to tear it all down and put up the right album. This is Ray Halista oh, Jula. Did I take a really? Yes. I uploaded the wrong album? Yes. Yes, oh, sir. I thought it was. Uh, oh, I thought it was Her- Hiramu Hosokizunyo. Shit. So you said the Christmas album. That is the Christmas album. Yeah. Ray Halista Jula is the Christmas album. Oh. Huh. You put up the album so in 2015, would... didn't you? Put up the one in 2010. Oh, okay. I don't know what that is. Yeah, let me uh, let me see what some of these not titles are. I thought I thought it was Christmas, but I don't know. My ass from a hole in the ground someday. So, what? I, uh, no. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah. So this one's got uh, Initial March, Dinosaur Night, Rusty Robot, Grandma's Moped. Hiccup, Zoo Night <laughs> Watchman, The Backyard, Jesus how Ghost. We, how did we not do an album with a song called Grandma's Moped? <laughs> Heavy Pizza, Superhero, Hurry. Ah, oh, fuck. Do you mean I've been li- I listened to the wrong album the entire time? <laughs> it might have happened. Yeah. No, no, it it happened. Let me figure out what fucking album I was supposed to look at. I thought that yeah. oh, because the problem is let, 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 let me talk to Jesse <laughs> for a moment. Can you, can you look up Rachelist the Juba, please? Get on the right page. It was a snowball fight. I sneaked into the hall, auction ferocious announces Snow War that began. I peeked through the gap of the door, but I do not you afraid at all. I got the ball muzzle. <laughs> The ball, the ball muscle, dude. It gets better. Oh my gosh! Oh, that was. Also, I, I got the muscle. ball muscle, and yes, scared. Although, do not play in bold. Oh, no, I got the ball that. muscle. <laughs> now the second, now the second Luparin is that, of course, and all that. The hat I pull tight and run in the freezer. Oh shit! <laughs> it's on! It's on, folks. War. Dude, I got the ball muzzle. <laughs> Snowball <laughs> war. The, I got the ball muzzle. Bring out the gimp. <laughs> oh no, not a ball muzzle. Oh jeez. So, so I found the uh, holy shit! I found the album you were talking about. Huh? This from twenty eleven. Oh yeah, this makes sense now. Everybody's on a fucking sleigh. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn album covers. They get tricky. Yeah, right? Well, <laughs> let, let me see. <laughs> the one that I was, oh, oh, it's Halloween. Oops. I wonder. That, so that that one you you the one you listened to is actually a Halloween themed one. There's a fucking pumpkin on it. Huh. huh. I'm professionalism incarnate. There is a pumpkin on there. I wonder about yeah. the. Uh, I wonder if they do, like, a theme. Did you guys know that they released a movie, by the way? I, I yeah. saw that every time I was with the band. 
Uh, I just saw it on IMDb. It has eight votes. Uh, so I don't know. It, it supposedly it just released though, like November uh, November twenty seventh. Um. But uh, anyway, I don't know if I'll be watching that anytime soon. Um, I think you should. You should bring your kids. <laughs> Take your kids to see it. Yeah. Caleb and Colton will sit around, sit down for that the whole thing. They won't move at all. They'll be so in enthralled. It would never happen. <laughs> um. Well, that's. Uh, I like the beginning of that song, by the way. I thought it's, it 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 came in pretty damn heavy. Mm-hmm. Um. It kind of, but uh, yeah. Snowball War. It's on. <laughs> This next song might be about Rudolph. I'm not sure. There's something about a nose going on here. I don't. I don't really know. Uh, but, stop uh, trying. We'll, we'll stop trying to Americanize the finish. All right. Stop it. <laughs> Please leave the damn finish alone. Let them have their own damn. <laughs> they know culture. nothing of Rudolph. They care nothing of Rudolph. Take your they red probably, nose and they, shove it up your ass. They probably cooked Rudolph. Let's be <laughs> fair. <laughs> I'm reading the lyrics to Grandma's Moped right now. This is interesting. <laughs> Grandma's like it's, Moped. Like, it's just describing uh, the moped real. accelerating through the downhills, and look at his exhaust. Grandma's Moped. The exhaust slams nice. The ride is traveling. There's a song about the backyard, the zoo night watchman hiccups again, curly hair. What, That's oh, the name of my new band, oh. Grandma's. That's in my new rock band, Grandma's Moped. Muffy Puffin Lesson. It's all about, like, your ABCs up to G for some reason. Like, they're like, fuck it. There's old, and then there's fast. Wow. All right. I I have to go to work tomorrow, so we're going to listen to the last two tracks and get the hell out of here. This next one is Herni Nanasa. Uh, which translates into herning nose. Hey, voitasko soittaa joku joululaulu? Käviskö joulu ja juhlaa yö? Joo, menetään se! Joo! Ei tää kyllä taida olla meidän juttu. Voisit se riffiraffi soittaa jotain kivaa? Jotain hullusti. Joku oli yöllä jennyt nenäporkkanan ja laittanut sen tilalle herneen surkeon. Ei haittaa vaikka uusi nenä näyttää hassulta, mutta mulla on ongelma, en mitään haista. Ukko huomasi ympärillään jäljet jänikseen, lainat isännältä sukset lähti perään hiihtäen. Pois alta täältä tullosta tekkatua. No kuuntelepa nyt ensin tarina loppuun. Noniin! Okay, that's the fucking greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> well, there's obviously a conversation going on here between him and the band members, I assume. Or something. Because it, it sounds... Other dinosaurs? Yes, there's other the other dinosaurs that are in the in, in the band um, that can talk. Uh, I that's about all I got from it. It's a great song though. I think it's it's nice and heavy. It's uh, I really want to know what the hell they're saying to each other though. Okay, so it starts off like this: Hey, Voitaisko, call someone a Carol. 
how about Silent Night? Yeah, I pulled it. They right. something in Finnish. Hey is not a yes or not our thing. Riffy Raffy plays something cool. Yeah, yeah, everybody along. Here we go. Snowman in the morning when the eyes opened it was immediately <laughs> noticed. <laughs> now there is something wrong. Someone had taken the night nose carrot and put and put oh. in its place a miserable pea. Oh. That's that ain't like a good PGA, way to by the way. Yeah, you don't, you don't do that matter, to a snowman. But the new nose looks funny, but Mule has a problem. Nothing to smell. Uko, I noticed rabbit tracks around them. They built the snowman, and the rabbit took the nose. Got it. Jackalope. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing that out there. They're pieces of shit. Okay. Yeah, this is about a snowman. That, that's... I don't want to believe her this. That's all that's happening here is they built the snowman and the nose was taken and, um, you know, various hijinks ensued. They probably but damn, what a heavy a, song. They, they probably, like, pulled that scene from the number where they thought it was the wiener. <laughs> oh, okay. goodness. I'm running the uh, scene hey, here. Uh, 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 yeah, I mean, I'm running on the uh, wrong album, so. <laughs> <laughs> good, way to, good way to hit the year there, Coop. Uh, with another uh, song title? Uh, let's see, we have a children's traffic song, Bedside Lamp, <laughs> uh, Lisco Disco, Stick Horse, uh, let's see, Pedal to the Metal, and... Uh, that's all I got for the, this album here. It's funny. This is the only album not on dark lyrics. Funny. Okay. So here we go. Uh, this is the last track of the night. We're about to go over into our uh, recording time, but um, that's really going to be just long enough for us to say our goodbyes for the year and do some plugs. Um, so this last one is called Sharing Christmas. From the snowflakes float, the frozen winter weather still steps wanders. Is the elf remained outside the no high at the time of Christmas does not leave anyone alone. And it just kind of goes on like that. This one isn't like really funny. Did you say Hoth? Did you say the word Hoth? <laughs> and, and the rebels were discovered on Hoth. Luke hangs from the ice. A snow, a snow, monster, a snow monster loses its arm. I I just I you know I heard Hoth and I, I mean it was like oh oh this is about Star Wars. Um, oh, see I heard Hoth and I thought this is about Germany. <laughs> okay, all right. Hoth, what I said 
It's H A A S. Haas is the gateway to the path from the snowflakes floats. Charlie Haas, sir. Charlie. All right, I'm done. <laughs> World's <laughs> greatest <laughs> tag team. That's oh, right. my uh, goodness. Uh, that, that sounded like a really nice song. Yeah. You know, it had a nice, epic power metal feel to it. Shame I didn't listen to it all. <laughs> I could tell you about all the. I could tell you about their 2010 album. There was a song that their ABC song straight up sounded like Walk. Oh. <laughs> Nine. Three. Back. Walk. And, ABC. And there and there was a few times I heard balls to the wall in there, and uh, it's pretty fucking cool. All right. Yeah. Maybe uh maybe next year. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll uh, get a heavy source Halloween or something, or uh, I don't know, knowing me then, I'll upload Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and I will once again have a pack back. Uh, I show, up right. an hour, show up an hour late, listen to the wrong album. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's not for Jesse. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, he was talking about it and he goes, that's none of the songs. <laughs> I mean, I love you, too, but, you know, you did not the strongest end. <laughs> no, in, in fact, I would say this is the equivalent of Grandma's moped. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that, folks, is Heavy Saurus, Ray Halista Jula, a Ray Halista Christmas, Christmas with the Fins, Christmas here on the Metal Hammer of Doom with my good buddies Robert Cooper and Jesse Starcher. Um as I said, next year we'll be uh, we'll we'll start it all again. Um, our first uh, right now I have on the uh, on the calendar our first show back, unless we do something on the 14th, which we haven't talked about yet. But our first show back will be the 28th of January. Uh, we'll be reviewing Megadeth Dystopia, and then we'll be back the following week. Uh, we'll do two shows in a row. February 4th, Metal Hammer of Doom will review um, Avantasia's new album, Ghost Lights. Uh, Ghost Lights, duh. Um, and after that, uh, on March 3rd, we'll be reviewing um, Anthrax for All the Kings. We may fill in some other stuff in between there. I just started throwing up some albums we were definitely going to review. Uh, but there's some still some open spaces where we need to plug in some shows. So we'll figure out what we're going to do on those open days. But for sure, uh, we've got the 28th is Megadeth, Dystopia. On the 4th, Metal, um, Avantasia, Ghost Lights. And then on March 3rd, um, Anthrax for All the Kings. Um in the meantime, uh, we've got some more. Um, the rest of the year is pretty much just going to be movie reviews. Uh, on the 16th, Robert Winfrey and I will be doing our 2015 year-end movie review podcast where we'll uh, look back at the studios, which ones made money, which ones lost money, who gets the movie prize, and who won this year. And it's probably going to be either Universal or Disney. It's probably going to be Disney. Um on the 23rd, we'll be reviewing The Force Awakens, and then on uh, December 30th, we'll be reviewing The Hateful Eight, and that pretty much uh, takes us to the end of the year here on the Rattle Legend Broadcasting Network. Jesse, since you were first of the party, you get to do your plugs first. All right. Um, what do you got going on for the rest of, the, uh, of December? Ah, shoot. Source material, folks. If you guys like comics, uh, I do a comic book podcast here on the Rattle Legend Broadcasting Network. The rest of the year, uh, let's see. Uh, well, I can tell you next week we definitely have, this coming Monday, I guess I should say, we should have a podcast. It's either going to be about the our next story arc in regards to Why the Last Man, uh, which is uh, a great Brian K. Vaughn book. Um, and I'm supposed to get Ronnie and a couple other people on there. That's kind of up in the air. If it doesn't happen, we're, I think me and Ronnie will probably just have some kind of a bullshit episode where we just talk about comics and, and, and stuff that happened throughout the year. Um, i got a few other shows lined up I can't think of off, off the top of my head. I know me and Coop got to get together and figure out a time when we could talk some uh, Vinland Saga. Uh, hopefully we'll get that in before the end of the year. Um, I do want to thank you guys and congratulate you both on a great and successful year of Metal Hammer of Doom. Uh, I want 
I wanted to have a list in front of me of the albums that you guys covered just so we could maybe kind of figure out what your guys' favorite was so far that you maybe you covered. Um, I could tell you off the top of my head, I, did Blind Guardian happen this year? Was that earlier yeah, this yeah. year? That is probably my favorite album that you guys covered so far. I can't – okay, not – Clutch, I have to set. Cl- I have to set Clutch in a different category, and because they're my all-time favorite of all. But I've really enjoyed well, Blind Guardian. I tell you what, I can do. I can. Re- re- I actually have it up on the calendar. I Ooh. programmed all the stuff into the calendar. Um, some when we get to like August, it may be a little off because I know I I threw some stuff out that we ended up doing. But we did a typo negative retrospective at the beginning in January. Um, January 29th, we reviewed uh, Apex Predator, uh, Easy Meat by Easy Napalm Meat. Dad. <laughs> Blind Guardian was in February. Okay, all right. On the Red Deer. Um, and it's Ferrum, One Man Army, was February 26th. Um, apparently, we did nothing in the month of March. <laughs> or nothing that I decided to put on the calendar. Well, we had that uh, covers pie. Yeah. It would probably make more sense if I actually pulled up the actual, like, you know, what we did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, go on, Jesse. What were you saying? Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, I had a lot of fun listening to you guys, and I want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to come on here and talk with you guys about some some heavy metal and some great albums. Um, but, uh, I, I, yeah, I was going to say, Folks, go back there. Listeners, go back there and check out the archives. There is a lot of albums that came out this year that uh, these guys had the chance to cover, and they did a great job letting you at least know what was on the album. Um, And 